in my particular case this time, he answered prayer with a nurse and uh, a Catholic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah they let me take him home. Yeah. Look at that sucker. Yeah, uh, I mean, you'd think that uh, you you'd think I'd be flattered that she thought she could fit that in me, right? <laughs> I wasn't flattered. I was terrified. I mean, I, I've come to the conclusion that a catheter is basically like a wimp meter. You know, if you guys can take this without flinching, you're a real man. Me, I was a wimp. Yeah, I just I just saw a couple of guys cross their legs. You know, better than safe than sorry. So it goes on and on, and, and uh, my wife's a really good cancer partner, and she's standing next to me, and, and uh, kind of finally we get to that point where, hey, the nurse is saying she's sitting on the bed there, and, and uh, she's got the cat there in her hand, and she's ready to go, and I'm terrified. I mean, from my head down to my feet, I'm terrified. And in one particular place in between, and. Uh, and uh, finally, I look at my wife, and my super supportive wife, and I said, you know, I need a little support here. My wife looks at me, and she says, hey, pal, if I get a pap smear, I go, no, I don't want that. And, and, but then, she changed, and uh, she was really good about it. And she comes up next to me, and she puts her right hand around me, right arm around me, nice and tight, and oh, that feels really good. I'm into it. And, uh, and then she brings her left hand up here, okay? And uh, and she looks at the nurse and she says, just do it. I'll try to hold them down and muffle the screens. <laughs> and, and, hey, uh, Brian is starting to flash his flashlight at me back there. I, my, my time is about up. Which I need to point out is very different than Brian is flashing me back there. He's not. I saw this lady just turn her head to check. Yeah. <laughs> Brian, I think you've got a fan up here. You know, maybe when you come up, you gotta unbutton a couple of buttons and pull some of that chest hair on. She, she sort of looks like the type. Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't know what's going on. I mean, who knows? Maybe you guys get married and have a bunch of kids. I don't know. Oh. Uh, and name the first kid after me. Name the first kid after me, will you? Hey, I'm Bob Johnson. Thank you so much for being here. Uh, Here 
all of a sudden done it. Like some sort of weird summer camp from hell where you can drink. I used to go to the summer camp every year. We had this weird camp counselor from hell. He'd gather us around the campfire every night. He'd get out of his guitar and he'd sing us songs. He'd say, let's dedicate a song to the kid with one arm. Go row the boat in circles, hallelujah. And Michael would love it. He'd be back in the back row clapping along. <laughs> Heard a guy knocking on my door today. Well, I didn't want to answer. Hope he go away. He's a Jehovah. This is a very cool program with one critical flaw. 
They're taking these poor kids out of their rat infested homes and sending them to a land where the mice are 10 feet tall. <laughs> Here's another thing from the news, this is interesting. According to a recent survey, masturbation is up in the United States. Who the hell's doing this research? <laughs> How desperate do you have to be for a job to go door to door going, ah, do you touch it? <laughs> do you rub it on anything? And if you knock on someone's door and they don't answer, you know what they're doing, right? <laughs> oh, crazy, crazy. I, uh, this is weird. I'm a little embarrassed about this. I got kicked out of Victoria's Secret recently. <laughs> Apparently, they frown on guys going in with sandwiches, lawn chairs, and beer and making an afternoon out of it. <laughs> I had no idea. <laughs> There's nothing quite like getting your butt kicked by three women in sexy underwear. <laughs> going back next week with a keg. <laughs> and a kiddie pool full of lime jello. That is going to be one heck of a restraining order. <laughs> so I go across the mall and they have this, this shop there. It's called Everything 80s. Kind of cool. I went in there. I'm just all in the 80s. They had a little machine in there that could, uh, that could analyze your handwriting. It, you, you, you write your name on a sheet of paper, you pop it in the machine, and it would kick out all sorts of interesting information about you. It was a little pricey. It was like 300 bucks, but I did it. Turns out I'm gullible, easily fooled, and susceptible to confident scam artists. <laughs> I wish I'd known that before I paid the $300. I thought love was only true in fairy tales. Then I met the perfect girl for me. But she didn't want me. She said all men were hogs. She said that she'd rather sleep with dogs. So I got a
So I asked her, I didn't you know, explain what that is. And she said, before I could drive my car, uh, I, I get in there and I got to blow into this thing. And I said, how convenient I have a thing. <laughs> and uh, she said, no, 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 before I can start my car, I got to blow into this big black tube. And I said, okay, in that case, you got to meet my friend Jerome. <laughs> He's got one of those. I, uh, I was at a bar one night, and I got hit on by a guy. This is the first for me. You know about guy. Now look, I don't care that it's a guy. I, it doesn't make any difference to me. What's significant is that I, me, what you're looking at here right now, this, was hit on by a human being. So, you know, I explained to this guy that I don't play on his team, uh, but he tells me he's a contractor and, you know, that it's perfect timing because I was just getting ready to do some uh, home renovation. So I figured, what the heck? It seems like he knows, knows what he's talking about. It seems like a nice guy. So we exchanged phone numbers, and that was that. A couple days later, I get a text message from this guy. He says, hey, Ed, why don't you come over to my place tonight? We'll have a couple drinks. Talk about how I can help with your project. I like the guy already. He seems like a go-getter. At the end of his text message, he used an emoji. Now, if you don't know, you should, that a lot of these emoji have double meanings. This one apparently did. The emoji he used was the eggplant. <laughs> yeah, the eggplant. I have no idea. But I wanted to be polite, so I shot it back one of these. <laughs> I found out something about myself that night. I found out exactly how far I would go just to get my kitchen remodeled. <laughs> By the way, my next project is I want to put a new deck, uh, a new deck on the back of my house. So if anybody here thinks you have what it takes, you know, to help out, uh, text me. I. Um, Let's see, it was about three weeks ago, I had my annual physical. I went to my doctor, and the doctor did a, a testosterone test on me, and then uh, he explained that this is measuring your sex drive. I have the testosterone of a stalk of celery. <laughs> he explained to me if, uh, if you have low testosterone, they call it low T. And uh, he said, I got some bad news for you, you got low T. Well, you see, it's bad for me. The reason it's bad for me to have low T is that I got a small D. And when you combine my low T with my small D, I ain't getting no P. <laughs> Doctor also did a uh, uh, PSA test, you know, to do for us old guys for uh, prostate. And uh, apparently the blood test came back kind of high. Because he said, uh, while well, you're meant to bend over, I'm going to have to physically examine your prostate. Not one of my favorite things at all. But this one actually turned out pretty good, you know, because now my doctor is going to build my new deck. <laughs> Thank you for coming out. Well, it's old people's night. You guys still awake? I like how he moves the uh, time back when it's old people's night. That's beautiful, isn't it? <laughs> I gotta tell you something. Every night for the last two years, I parked my Optima in front of my house with the windows down and the keys in it, and the Kia boys have yet to take it. <laughs> Do you know what it's like being rejected by juvenile delinquents? I'm old enough now that I feel I've earned the right to sit on my front porch and tell teenagers to get the fuck off my lawn. You with me? Here's the problem. Teenagers don't go outside anymore. They stay inside and play video games and watch internet porn. So now i got to go to their house, find out what window their bedroom is, and yell at them from there. Hey, you kids with your 3D internet porn shooting 400 zombies a second. Without your 